Let's say you're a very popular fruit vendor who needs to keep track of your prices. You may want to quickly look up or change the price of an apple. At this point, you need to choose a good data structure for your price table. You could use a linked list with nodes that have both the fruit name and its price, but then you'd have to search through the whole list to find your fruit. You want an array, but there's no array type that lets you index by fruit name. But what if you could make one? If you could map each fruit to an array index, then you could store each price at the corresponding array index. Hash tables do just this, letting us look up an insert in O of one time, on average and with amortization. In the rest of this video, we'll talk about how and why we need those caveats. Let's use this mapping. Imagine you're only selling four fruits, oranges, bananas, apples, and strawberries. Since we only have four fruits, we could map oranges to the index zero in array, bananas to index one, and so on. To look up oranges, we just look at index zero. Everything's solved, except how do we get this mapping? We'd like to be able to look up orange and get its index, but now we're right back to where we started. If you only have four fruits, you might just decide to memorize your mapping and use that. But you're a very popular fruit vendor and you're always getting new fruit, so that doesn't work. We still have some more tricks though. Instead of creating an arbitrary mapping, we'll create a hash function to help us turn a fruit into an index. A hash function is specially designed so that it always maps the same fruit to the same number, but tends to map different fruits to different numbers. These numbers may be very large. To get our final index, we mod them by the length of the array. For example, we might make our hash function by taking the ASCII value of the first letter of the fruit. This would hash banana to 66, but if our array has length 8, we'd get an index of 2. Of course, that would be a pretty bad hash function since it wouldn't be evenly distributed, so in reality you would do some more computation. At this point you might wonder, but how do we make sure two fruit never end up at the same index? We don't. We just suck it up and deal with collisions. There are two main ways to handle collisions keeping a linked list at each index, separate chaining, or looking for another open spot in the array, open addressing. For this video, we'll just look at using a linked list. That means that if orange is at index 2, and banana also gets hashed to index 2, we'll just stick it after the entry for banana. So how is a hash table going to help us look up our fruits any faster than linked lists? Imagine you have n fruits and a table with n indices. All of the fruits could be stored in one chain, which is basically a linked list. But in the best case, we could have only one fruit at each index. This is where the average part of the complexity comes from. No hash function is perfect, but a good hash function will, on average, distribute the keys evenly. If our table has size n, that means on average, our lookup will be O of 1. That's an important if. In general, the cost of lookup depends on the underlying table size. Assuming an even distribution of elements means that if we have n elements and m slots, each slot should have n over m elements. If we have eight fruit and four table slots, a good hash function should make it so that each index has two fruit. So in general, the average cost of lookup is O of n over m. Wait, but didn't we want to look up in O of 1? The table size of a hash table is important. Earlier, we decided we needed to be able to add more fruit as our business expanded. If we were using an array, that would mean we would need an unbounded array. Our separate chaining hash table can have more elements than array spots, since we could just keep adding to linked lists. However, let's look at what happens if we keep doing that. Say we started off with our little four fruit hash table. As we kept adding fruit, even if they were perfectly distributed, the chains would get really, really long. If we had 400 fruit, each chain would be 100 elements long. If we have 4n fruit, each chain would be n elements long. That's not O of 1 anymore. We can only maintain our fast lookup time by resizing our array when the table gets too crowded, when the ratio of fruit to table slots, n over m, becomes too large. This is called the load factor. If you want constant lookup time on your hash table, you need to maintain a constant load factor. Resizing is expensive. We need to take out all the elements from the old array and reinsert them to spread them out again. However, the overall cost can still be low. Last video, we learned about our new friend, amortized analysis. Remember, we can use amortized analysis when we have mostly cheap operations and sporadic expensive operations. Here, the cheap operations are adding fruit to the hash table and the expensive operation will be resizing the hash table. While an individual insertion may be very expensive, a sequence of insertions is guaranteed to be cheap. That means the cost of inserting an element isn't just average case O of 1, but average case O of 1 amortized. 
Adding amortized means that individual insertions may be more expensive, but a sequence of n insertions is guaranteed to be O of n, making each one O of 1. Hash tables give us an average case lookup of O of 1 amortized. That seems like a lot of modifiers to worry about, but the good news is, with a good hash function, you're fine. For all intents and purposes, hash tables are O of 1 lookup and insertion for whatever data type you want. And that's pretty magical.